the Roach program in front of you, we'll be introducing Ben for the second hour. But for the first hour, we have Mr. Frank Andrews, an astronomer from Wellington today. And he's going to be talking to you about the journal of planets, um, as told by Fox in the background. And to start us off, Harry Tina here, would you like to actually talk about the version? Harry Tina has actually produced this movie. Now, it, it, it's a, a voyage through the planets, and it's taken from all sorts of NASA images. It's an amazing, amazing journey that she's put for a backdrop to Frank to speak over. So, would you like to say anything about that? I do that. It was a, a great um, work that Frank and herself did. But uh, today we're going to try and take you through the solar system with Holst's planets music. Now Holst wasn't an astronomer. He was in fact a very good musician and his approach to the planets was to produce music based on the ancient Greek mythology. Craters, valleys, a, a, a basalt lava. This is basaltic lava, like you get in Hawaii. A volcano, two volcanoes, and a third, the biggest volcano in the solar system, 27 kilometers high with 72 miles, I'm sorry, in American units, across the crater. Here's an oblique view of Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in the solar system. We look down at the desolate plains and lava flows. And we skim across the surface. This is where one of the landers is. Now these are real radar images of the surface. Except we put the clouds in on top to give it a feeling. And this is about the right colour if you were on the surface. The atmosphere is so dense that sunlight would be reddened in the same way that sunlight is reddened by the Earth's atmosphere near sunset. Imagine that's a pretty rough surface. Now to look at, Mercury has very much the appearance of the moon in a telescope. Except that Mercury has a massive iron core and a thin mantle and crust of rock. Often being described as a ball bearing with a thin veneer of rock. Strangely, the surface temperature is slightly less than that of Venus. Because on Venus you have what's called a greenhouse effect. But on Mercury there's no atmosphere of any significance, apart from a little bit of the solar wind which is captured by the gravitational field of Mercury. And that's so rarefied that it has no other effects. It's pitted with craters, just like the moon, Jupiter. Eleven times bigger in diameter than the Earth. You could put the Earth about 1300 times inside this planet. And all we see is the surface of a cloudy atmosphere. 
This world is made of hydrogen and helium with smaller amounts of methane, ammonia. Here's a view of the pole taken from one of our uh, probes that have visited the planet. And you can see the, the bands of cloud. Here's this famous red spot. You could put the Earth two and a half times along it and one and a half times across it. These are huge jet streams that circulate in opposite directions, creating wonderful turbulent patterns that would do justice to any impressionistic artist. Look at the fine divisions in the rings, often compared with the grooves on an old gramophone record, of which I've seen some around here today. Again, you see the shadow of the rings. Jupiter rotates in nine hours, 58 minutes. Saturn in a little over nine hours, about nine hours, 10 minutes. So they're both rapid spinners. This is a view you could never get from Earth. The shadows of the rings cast on the planet. See, very thin, the sunlight can actually come through. As we sink down towards the southern pole, we begin to see atmospheric features. But you'll notice how muted they are compared to those of Jupiter. This is because instead of the temperature being 158 below zero, it's nearly 200 at this distance and methane in the atmosphere forms a haze in the upper atmosphere above the cloud deck. And here's Uranus with its own ring system. But notice how bland the surface of the planet actually is. That is because now the temperatures are down around minus 220 to 230 degrees so cold that we have a complete haze of methane in the upper atmosphere. There's also some ammonia. You'll notice the Pleiades or the Matariki in this view behind Uranus. The globe of this planet is almost featureless. But it's, and it's an interesting thing is that it lies over on its side. Possibly in the past, it has suffered a huge impact with another object, which has tilted this axis of rotation, 94 degrees. Now here, we've got another 30 degree drop in temperature. The methane has now been frozen out of the upper atmosphere. And so once again, we can see the cloudy surface beneath. There's still some haze, but it's much less than in the case of Uranus. And lo and behold, one of the first things that was observed as Voyager passed this planet were these wonderful dark spots, often with cyclonic storms associated with them. That one's got a little bunch of clouds. Wind velocities on this planet exceed the speed of sound. Sounds like Wellington at times. <coughs> and, we're, and we're seeing clouds of ammonia and methane caught up in these huge jet streams. <coughs> 